How did the tragic kidnapping of a young man from the beaches of Massachusetts result in the brokering of a peace deal that ensured the survival of an entire nation? Squanto's story is legend in our American retelling of the Thanksgiving holiday. He is the unforgettable memory of peace between colonist and native, as he taught the Puritans of the Plymouth colony in 1621 how to fertilize their corn with fish and then brokered a peace treaty between the disquieted peoples. Tesquantum of the Patuxet invoked what became a uniquely American spirit of Christian cultural diversity and providence between two worldviews similar in only their dissimilarity. In exile from even the ghosts of his own people, Squanto survived two Atlantic voyages, the brutal slave markets of Malaga, and the urban racism of London. Upon his return to his homeland, he became the hostage and pawn to a neighboring tribe with only his Christian faith to guide him and the hope he would one day be allowed into heaven. Thanks to his efforts, war was averted for a generation. Prior to his kidnapping in 1614, thousands of people lived in seaside villages. When he returned to Nairngesset Bay only five years later, the familiar sands had been replaced by a literal apocalypse, miles of graves, displaced anger, and a confederation of desperate survivors led by the young Sachem Usamequin of the Pocanoket, later known as King Massasoit. The Wampanoag Confederation were a people with a very different perspective on life than the incoming pilgrim Christian missionaries. The Wampanoag believed that within a person two souls existed, the Mitachunk, or animating force, and the Kawanonk, or dream force. They believed in an underworld ruled by the god Chipi, an afterworld ruled by the god Ketan, and a great magical power that lived within all living things known as the Manit, wielded by powerful people known as powwows, who could access that power to perform supernatural deeds. They were a people intensely interested in the spiritual implications of the religious, because of the peace Tisquantum brought to them, they had full access to the missionary pilgrims who lived at Plymouth. Eventually, their inquisitiveness shepherded the founding of John Eliot's praying towns, way stations between cultures, communities where natives could approach the Christian faith in a non-prejudicial framework, where native children could learn to read and write, and where Nairngesset Bay culture was celebrated instead of feared or maligned. Missionaries like John Eliot believed that within their language were the glimmers of the divine, bits and pieces of the shattered Edenic language once shared at Babel. As a result of Eliot's lifelong quest, the Wampanoag Bible became the second translated Bible in the world, the first being the Malay Bible from Malaysia. Fellow converts such as the Socratic Waban, the evangelist Hayakums, the prophet Japet Hanit, and missionaries such as Momonakwem, Wampamog, and Pamehanit, they paved the way for preachers such as John Cotton Jr., the pastor of Plymouth Church, who conducted a sweeping preaching tour in 1660 over 20 months with 119 Sabbath meetings among six praying towns of eager learners. The lasting effects of Squanto's rigors were not inconsequential. The leader of the pilgrims, William Bradford, was a predecessor and inspiration to the founders with his Massachusetts Bay Charter in 1629, a document eerily reminiscent to Jefferson's Declaration of Independence, and Bradford was able to arrive only because of the peaceful politicking of the Christian Tisquantum. Even though the Wampanoag people eventually came to believe in the Christian God, Powerful remnants of their traditions were preserved for almost 200 years due to their sacred place in the heritage of American history. Thanksgiving is a memorial to this peaceful coexistence, sparking with a dinner celebrating survival and continuing to the American ethic of a world not separated by borders, but united in values.